welcome back my dear brothers and sisters to understand the concept of Ishwara as propounded by Patanjali. What is the concept of God according to Patanjali? He called God as Ishwara. And how does he define Ishwara? Klesha, Karma, Vipakashayehi, Aparam, Prishtaha, Purusha, Visheshaha, Ishwaraha, he said. So, it is an ideal person, it is a role model of a person, a person who has established himself in the Swarupa, in the original state. And according to Patnali, there is a Purusha and the Prakriti. Purusha is the original state in which there is no avidya and there is no smallness, pettiness, selfishness, there is no raga, dvesha, there is no change. It is a state of infinite pure consciousness which is beyond space, time, causation. And that is our original state. Prakriti featured by chitta vritti or the chitta goes on changing and changing and changing and changing. So this is called the prakriti. In that we have the tamas, rajas and the sattva. And the two things have been mixed up in all of us. And the goal is to separate ourselves from the Purusha, the Prakriti. And this Purusha is called the Ishwara. So, what is the definition he gives? Klesha, Karma, Vipaka. You know, what is Klesha? That which is painful, that which is afflicted, that which is impure, that which is colored, is called the Klesha. Then what about karma, actions? And what is vipaka? The fruits of maturing, ripening and aging. That's all the vipaka. And they are all in the form of a storage of big traces, propensities and accumulation. It's ashayaha. So it's an ocean of klesha, karma and the vipaka in all of us. And this is called the avidya, this is called the impurity, this is called the muck. And a person who is purified of all these things, aparam vrishtaha, a person who is untouched, a person who is unspeared, a person who is having no avidya at all, he is called the purusha, he is called the purusha vishesha. A pure consciousness, all pervasive pure consciousness, infinite, beyond space, time, causation. And that is called as the Ishwara. That is the definition of Ishwara. Ishwara is essentially Purusha. And in another place, Patanjali says, when complete Chitta Vritti Nirodha occurs, what happens? Tada Drashtuhu Swarupe Avasthanam. Then he goes back to his Purusha. Purusha Thiti is Ishwara Thiti. So that's how he defines Ishwara. So Ishwara has infinite power, infinite knowledge, infinite freedom, infinite bliss. And therefore, Ishwara is the supreme. And he is the teacher of all ancient teachers, whomever you call as a teacher, whether the Patanjali, whether the Krishna or the Rama or Satma Rama, any teacher you take, he is the teacher of all teachers. Guru Kalena Anavachedad because he is beyond space and time and causation. Therefore, he is the designator of this Ishwara and therefore he is the Guru of all Gurus, the highest Guru of the highest. And what is the name? What is the designation of this Ishwara? Called Pranava. Thus a Vachaka Pranavaha, as it said. He is to be called as Om. That's it. So, okay, what do you do using this home? You know, he says, using that home, you go on training your mind to tune itself to that Ishwara, to that Om. You know. Japa is the way to, to resonate. Japa is to shape the mind to this forum. So, tad japaha tad artha bhavanam. He says, take the japa form. What is that? 
Om Japa, imagine that vast, infinite, beautiful, blissful, pure consciousness that is the Ishvara, and this go on doing that with the understanding that each Om is that Ishvara, the Japa hat that Artha Bhavanam. So when you go on doing it, the mind slowly gets attuned; it gets resonated to that all pervasive pure consciousness, to that all pervasive blissful, peaceful state. Of well-being, and when this happens, you know, then you elevate yourself. This is the process of purification that he gives. What sadhana you have to do to get at that Ishvara level, you know? But then he is giving this wonderful technique of Om. You know? So, Japa is the dimension for that, and this Japa with the Artha helps to develop what you call as the surrender. It is the ego that constricts. No? Avidya, asmita, raga, afinivesha, klesha. When he is going to do later, the klesha he says the whole process of the prakriti is condensing, contains smaller, 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 and smaller. And now this has to be taken back. How to do that? You have to expand and expand and expand. So, what is this process of expand? It is called pranidhana, surrender to Ishvara. Surrender to Ishvara is a process of expansion. That means our small little individual personality we are, we are going to expand and expand to the level of Ishvara. That all pervasive, infinite, pure consciousness we are going to expand. You know. So this process is called the process of surrender. He called it as Ishvara Pranidhana. You know. And therefore, Tajapaha Tadartha Bhavanam. He says. You know. So it is one of the Dimension that comes up there. You know. Then, when you start doing, naturally there will be a lot of distractions, you know, and you have to overcome them. So he enumerates what are all the chitta vikshepas that you get, what are the obstacles that you get. They are called the antarayas. You know. So he gives the following: so vyadhi, stiana, samshaya. Pramada, Alasya, Avirati, Bhranti Darshana, Alabda Bhumikatva, Anavasthitatvani, Chitta Vikshepaha, he said. You know. So, it starts off with the dimensions of the physical level. You have physical disease, you may get some infection, a fever, a vomiting, a diarrhea, various types of yadis can come. You know. And this is the thing that happen. Once you start doing the practice, you are likely to bring about these changes in the body which may lead to Vyadhi. Then it can be Sthyana, that is the mental languor, the Tharji. That means you don't feel like doing anything. And Padre says you do asana, I don't feel like do asana. And you don't want to do any sadhana, no pranayama, no mudra, pandas, kriyas, nothing whatsoever. You know, that is called this Sthyana. Great laziness, resistance to action. You are about to start asana, but you don't feel like doing. Eh, today I will take leave, goes away. Then samshaya, the third one. It's a doubt. Oh, you have started doing that, whether it will be helpful for me, whether you are going to do good for me, or what if it creates some problem for me? You know, now I have started getting some little fever, it may aggravate and may get into cancer and may cause all types of things. You may have a lot of suspicion, a lot of doubts about the practice. This is the third obstacle that you encounter. And the fourth one is called the pramada. You know. The pramada is the heedlessness or misplaced priorities. You know. Always you think, oh, if I do one day yoga, what is going to happen? Let me spend my time. Particularly people in the business, they say, I don't have time. To do the practice. If I had one hour, I would have earned under thousand dollars. Why should I do like this? That is the misplaced priorities. You may have all the wealth of the world, but still it can be suffering and suffering and suffering from various vyadhis, NCDs, and dukkha, tensions, stresses, and maybe a heart attack. 
Therefore, what is important in life we have to recognize. What is your priority in life? Health is a priority. And moving towards and higher and higher realms of consciousness, moving towards perfection should be the aim. That should be the priority. But you lose that priority. And you do that. Then comes alasya. That is the physical laziness. Sthyana is the mental laziness. In the mind you don't want to think. You want to do and don't do anything. But alasya is at the physical level. You don't want to move. You just want to sit in place. You don't want to walk and do this. Then the sixth one is avirati. Avirati is attachment to the senses and as a result of that you get stuck with the senses. You don't have an escape as if. The mind continuously dwells in that state of sense pressures. I want this. I want this thing. Today what is my food? What is my breakfast? What is my lunch? What is my evening tea? And what is evening thing? All the time we are involved in this dimension of the avirati. Mind is involved in that avirati that happens. You know. And that is the power of the senses over the sense organs. And therefore the senses are stuck with their desire to enjoy the objects. And as a result the mind is avirati. So, it is enjoying the sense or enjoying the sense objects. Therefore, the mind is enjoying that thing that you have. Your nice gulab jamun, nice masala dosa, birthday cake, everything you are enjoying, enjoying. And therefore, the mind is stuck with that santosha because you are remembering. Then is the seventh. That is, bhranti darshana. An illusion. A delusion occurs. And various forms of that illusion may come up. You know, and you may completely get lost. You know. Schizophrenia could be one of that. You know, in which you think that you have reached the highest and you are in tune with the God and you know everything in the world and everybody, every world is going to go according to you. Bhranti Darshana. You know. Then you may have a good experience of a Samadhi. But it is not coming back again. Alabda bhumikatva. You have experienced something good. You know, in our pranayama you are going deep and deep. Your mind goes into silence. You are going to samadhi. But samadhi is not getting repeated at all. Ten years over sir but still I am not getting that. That bhumi that I got. That bhumikatva that I have got. I am not getting back. Alabda bhumikatva. And anavasthitatvani. That means you have got a wonderful experience of great bliss, joy and everything you have got and you have got it repeated also but it is not getting stabilized. You know. That the non-maintenance of a firm ground is not coming up. The mind is not getting stabilized. It is still chanchala. Come, sometimes it comes, sometimes it doesn't come. Sometimes it comes. These are the nine Chitta Vikshepas Patanjali describes. Therefore, when you do the sadhana, you may get any of these obstacles or more of these obstacles also can come. Then your determination should be so good, your willpower should be so good. That should happen. But along with that, some obstacles also manifest. They are called the Sahabhava. What are they? Dukkha, Daur Manasya, Angame Jayatva. Shwasa Prachwasa Sahabhuvaha. These are the four associated obstacles. You know. The first thing is the Dukkha. Because of all these things here, all the time in a phase of misery, in a melancholy state, and you don't enjoy, the whole life has become full of Dukkha. You know. That is the first thing that happens. Dormanasya. Despair. The bad state of mind. The mind is no more enjoying. The mind is full of always despair. This not happen, that's not happen, this not there, that's not there, go on. No? Thinking, thinking in the wrong direction. Angame jayatva. That the body will start shaking, the hand is shaking, the body is shaking, and you cannot sit in a point, and then stand, you cannot do that, goes on. And the shwasa prachwasa. Breathing, haphazard breathing, shallow breathing, and fast breathing, jerky breathing, 
left nostril more than the right, right more than the left, all types of breathing irregularity. So these are, as Padnali calls the associates, called the Sahabhuvaha. You know, the nine Vikshepas along with these four Sahabhuvas, they all work in hand in hand and see that it happens. You know. So now what is the solution? You know, when all such obstacles come, what is to be done? One after another, one after another, people get different types, different types of obstacles and what to do about this thing. Because Patali not only brings about the obstacles, difficulties, problems and the challenges, but he also gives the solution. That's the dimension. Therefore, these solutions are called the Chitta Prasada. Chitta Prasadana occurs. You know, that the men mental well-being takes place. For that, what is to be done? He is going to take up the next sutra. Maitri Karuna Mudita Upekshanam Sukha Dukha Punya Apunya Vishayanam Bhavanataha Chitta Prasadanam. In the first chapter, in the 33rd sutra, he is telling this wonderful behavioral therapy, this wonderful process by which you will be able to transform yourself into a state of mental well-being. Chitta Prasada can come by doing these things. And we will see this in our next talk. Thank you very much.